Okay. Uh. How about that? Okay, we're going to try this again. Are we on now? See, that's kind of done for effect. I've never seen people so quiet. Thank you very much. Wow. Anyway, welcome to our council and committee meeting. My name is uh, Councillor John Wells, and uh, what a pleasure it is to see young people here. If you look around this table, this is what happens. When you get old, you come here and sit around. <laughs> Madam Deputy Clerk, you ready? You're in charge. <laughs> Thank you. On behalf of the chair, I would like to remind everyone that our meetings are web streamed and televised. For those in attendance, I ask that you ensure that your phones are on silent mode. I would like to thank our camera volunteer for tonight, and that is Judy Ann McCauley. And Councillor Oliver and Councillor Columbus are unable to be in attendance this afternoon. The first item on the agenda is ceremonial activities. And with that, I would invite Mayor Luke to come up and we can introduce the local government event. Mr. Chairman, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for this opportunity. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to local government. Well, it's local government week, and this is a, uh, a highlight for us here at this event and have these wonderful students here today. I heard them, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, come in the building this morning. I was just on my way out, and I uh, was glad to hear uh, lots of people coming into this building. Just a couple of comments, if I may. First of all, Norfolk County, as most of you know, is one of 444 municipalities that operate in this province. And on behalf of uh, Norfolk County Council, I'd like to welcome teachers and students today from Valley Heights Secondary and Delhi District Secondary Schools. As uh, our chairman mentioned, Councillor Oliver from Ward 4 is away on personal business. And Councillor Columbus from Ward 3 is away on personal business. And I'm not sure where Councillor Sonnenberg is, Mr. Chair, from Ward 7, but I'm sure he will be here shortly. I think he's afraid of all these young people. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. I guess in a nutshell, just to say that municipalities are governed by local councils elected officials, as we are sometimes called. Primarily, the job of council is simple. We are here to make decisions about the finances and certainly the legislation uh, and services that uh, we provide for our ratepayers. We, of course, are governed by the Ontario Municipal Act and we un operate under the rules and legislation of that act. I would like to finish by thanking our deputy clerk, Stephanie Godby, for your work in making this event happen, along with our clerk, Mr. Andy Grizel. And I do want to certainly welcome Amelia Jaggard back. We're glad to see her and appreciate her assistance. Again, welcome guests to our council chambers. We very much appreciate your interest in municipal governments. Steph, I'll turn it back to you, please. Do you want me to stare around? Do you want me to sit down? No, you can stay. I'll stay. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Power in numbers, right? Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for that introduction. I think we had a really good day today. Do you all agree? Yeah. Did you like it? When, when this program first started two years ago, it consisted of a PowerPoint presentation by Andy and myself, and I don't know necessarily if the, if the students really enjoyed it or not, but I can certainly say that the program has evolved so much and is including so much that it's showing the many different services that Norfolk County and other municipalities provide. So the students today, just to uh, make counselors aware, 
we had opportunities for students to see various fleet that the county has, so from Public Works and Environmental Services, as well as Fire and EMS, and have a demonstration as such. They were able to see a courtroom and see and get a better understanding of the POA. And Andy and Amelia facilitated a mock election, which I'm almost wondering if that was probably the highlight of the day. Um, I know that they, a lot of uh, time was spent and putting into the day and the program itself. So there's far too many people to thank. So what I will do is just thank all county staff for participating and assisting in any which way that they could behind the scenes or actually physically today. So everyone did a wonderful job and I thank you for that and look forward to many more years of doing this in the future. With that and being cognizant of time, I don't think I can call each student up to give their certificates. I know you do need to get on your bus very soon so you can make it back and get home in time. But what I do want to do is invite the teachers from Delhi District Secondary School and Valley Heights Secondary School to come up and uh, take the certificates of participation for the students to then uh, award back at the schools later this week. So if there aren't any questions, that concludes the local government day, and I do thank the schools again and all the staff that assisted. Sorry, uh, Councillor Brunton would like to say something. I just wanted to say a few things here. Uh, this gentleman next to me and myself used to play for the SCS Sabres. I and mean, I think you all know they are. They've got a good football team this year. And I noticed that uh, is Valley Heights and Del High that are here. What's wrong with your football teams? Hey? You're in charge. Anyways, I just wanted to uh, thank you all for coming and uh, go Sabres, go. Councillor Black. Just to, to show to the, uh, the students here how council operates, there's always two sides to every story. There's always the pros, there's always the cons, you know, and there's all the stuff in between. So even though my, my fellow colleague here, Mr. Brunton, who I did play football with, and he's an excellent athlete, and I was always secondary to him, I do know that... Uh, at some point, Valley Heights and Del High have had excellent football teams, excellent representation at the fair, the track, the tug of war, the cheerleaders. So I think you guys here are great. Okay, once again, on behalf of um, and through the chair and on behalf of committee, I'd like to thank the students for coming today and we'll give a few minutes to allow you to uh, escort yourselves out and we will then proceed with the committee meeting. Thank you again. Boy, Steffi, you know how to clear a room. <laughs> Yeah. I thought they were going to stick around. <laughs> <laughs> they like us so much, right? Going pretty well. I saw you in here. You were doing your little thing. Yes. Good. 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 Oh yeah, good. Uh, give them a flag and talk about moving forward in a positive manner, and uh, that'd be good. Hope that everything uh, sells nicely from there. I think you'll see them to be most appreciative of that. That would be my guess. You going? Seven o'clock. Who, who are you coming with? Uh, yeah.
I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. No, we'll be all right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we may uh, reassume our duties, please. Madam Clerk, Deputy Clerk. Thank you. On behalf of the chair, there are no changes to today's agenda. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. Mr. Mayor? I'm, I'm going to be picky. Again, there is no other business on the agenda as there was no other business of the last October the 2nd meeting. Again, I'm sure you intend to have it. Yes, I do. Must be the template has it missing for CIC. Again, I don't mean to be picky. I just thought I would mention that. Is it there? No. Okay, we will put that there, and thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Brunton. Mr. Chairman, if I may, on, on our information package, there is the uh, letter, or sorry, the letter from uh, Catherine McGarry about the gas wells, and I had some questions about that. I've had some inquiries, and I wonder, uh, can we deal with that under other business in open council? Yes. Or in open council, about regarding that? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's what I like to do. It's not secret, is it? Well, I, I don't know if it's secret. Oh, uh, better to ask the county manager All for right. his opinion. All you right. heard from the peon. Let's hear from the real one. All right. Mr. County Manager, please. There's always a trick and a fine line with handling things under other business. It is historically meant to simply be an opportunity for you to make announcements about events that have developed and are happening or going to occur in your respective wards. Uh, the church supper, a carol service, a chicken dinner, a festival, what have you. That is the traditional purpose of other business. It is not to materially advance, and so the test is whether we materially advance an item within council's jurisdiction. Now, it's perfectly fair to raise an issue you wish discussed. It's also fair to make inquiries of staff as to things that have happened, for instance, or what they might be working on, something of that nature. But uh, items of what's inappropriate under other business is to raise an item that somehow results in us uh, spending public resources or making a decision that would result into a new bylaw. Um, so those are sort of the material things need to be on an agenda ahead of time. That's the test the Ombudsman's clearly laid out. That those are numerous decisions across those. So there's certainly a way, uh, Councillor, to answer your question directly, to raise issues about things that have been ongoing. But certainly this, um, whether you're sitting as committee or council, because of course you also do that every other week, um, we shouldn't make decisions that materially alter the course of regular county business from items that are under other business. If you want to do that, that's about a notice of motion, something that you want to discuss in fullness and due course. So there are a couple of ways, if, if they're just after some points of clarification or wish to inform us of something, that's perfectly fair. Um, if we want uh, a municipal decision, it's probably not the item for, uh, under other business, you could bring a notice of motion, for instance, um, that, or, or just air something that you hope that in the future time we'd write a report on, because we're always very receptive to council and its preferences. Well, go ahead. Councilor well, my, my question, I guess, will be related to the letter addressed to our mayor and to Mr. Cribbs from, from the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, and it's in our information package, yep. which I received, so I have some questions on that. So I Very good. That, that's in the public realm and yeah. entirely reasonable to ask questions on that. Thank you. Councillor Height, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was under the impression that we could pull anything from the information package and discuss it and it would appear on our agenda. Now I realize it seems to take longer to appear on our agenda. So is, where are we going? Is it, this isn't another business item. This is an item onto our agenda which we could discuss and materially advance if required. So which one's it going to be? I, I know in the last few meetings or something, somebody's pulled something. It appears on our next agenda, and we discuss it then. Are we going to pick a standard? County manager? Well, with all due respect, there's been no change in standard. We're just codifying or clarifying uh, your existing practice. 
there, you get an information package, uh, which are documents that have been sent to this corporation, and which staff think you ought to know, be aware of. Those are put out to the public realm. Absolutely, you can make questions uh, or pose questions or comment under uh, other business about those items. But if you want to materially advance something, you have a process for you to get something on an agenda to be substantively discussed. Your mechanism is a notice of motion. And it is, frank, respectfully, the only mechanism you have beyond the head of council uh, can call an emergency meeting and sort of dictate what goes on an agenda for that if he or she so chooses. But th that is how we get there. It's entirely appropriate, though, for something that's in the information package for you to ask questions about. That's different than materially advancing something. Questions lead to answers and uh, more thoughts. But that's different than passing a bylaw to authorize spending to, I don't know, to do whatever. Okay. I have a question for clarification as well, so we can understand. Usually, under other business in the past, we have, if we had other business, we raised it. I have another business in terms of what's happening in Port Dover around the lift bridge I wanted to ask about, but it is not in our agenda. Should I wait and do that next week? And if that's the case, I can do that too. No, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with asking questions or raising an issue. Okay. And presumably that might, you might be satisfied simply with our answers, or in the future you might want future staff work, in which case your mechanism to, uh, you can't, nothing you say tonight can result in Norfolk County spending $15 million to fix a bridge, by way of no. example only. Yes. But you can get answers from staff. I'm sure uh, Ms. Robinson is preparing for those in her head as we speak. Um, so you get answers to questions, Good. but s real substance needs to be notice of motion. Thank you very much. Any other questions on this? And I think it's a growing, uh, uh, we're in a growing mode here, and I think we can all play by the rules once we know what the rules are. But it's important that we know what the rules are. And in the past, we have used the question period or other business for many reasons. And if we want to change that, I don't have any problem with that as long as we're all on the same page. All right? Can we go now to our agenda? Seeing no objections to that, Deputy Clerk. Would you take us home, please? Thank you, through the chair. As there are no changes to the agenda, I would need a mover and seconder to move uh, past the agenda as, pre as presented. Councillor Black, followed by Mayor Luke. All in favor? Carry. The next item on the agenda is pecuniary interests. Are there any dis uh, declarations of pecuniary interests this afternoon? None mentioned. And then the next item is the consent items. There are three on the agenda tonight, or this afternoon, I should say. And just as a reminder, if any member of council wishes to discuss a consent item and or ask questions upon it, please identify now, and we will move that item to the top of the staff reports, and it would be addressed first. If not, we will need a mover and a seconder to the recommendations within the three staff reports, and it's just one mover and one seconder. You're dealing with all three at the same time? Correct. Do we have a mover? Mayor Luke has moved. Mayor and Councillor Height has seconded. Questions? Okay. Councillor Height, we'll start with you, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mine doesn't have, have to do with specifically these three drainage issues. It's more on drainage in general. Am, am I able to ask I, those? I gotta find out. Uh, what's your answer to that? Is he able to ask questions? Not necessarily related to these three, but in general. Yes, questions yes. are pretty much always fair speak game. Speak up. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair and County Manager, for allowing me to speak. Uh, I guess for these, obviously, this appears to be a housekeeping thing where we're, I don't know, abandoning some drainage requests from back in the day. But uh, <clears throat> I guess sometimes we have these drainage uh, reports come forward, and it's initiated by county, our staff. And I'm wondering... Shouldn't they have council approval, or shouldn't be council council be aware of a certain drainage thing that's initiated by the count, county? I think both Ms. Robinson and I would like to answer first. I'll defer to her to start. Um, through the mayor to council, I, I think it depends on what the situation is. Um, under the Drainage Act, the road authority 
is the one that has the ability um, to do a variety of different things with respect to that. Um, by definition, through the Drainage Act, I am the voice for the drainage authority for the municipality. Um, you will recall that multiple times staff have brought things forward saying that we need direction with respect to that. There is a lot of outstanding items. I can't speak to how it went in the past, um, but in terms of signing petitions for drainage or any of that sort of stuff, um, staff do come, staff have been directed by myself to bring it forward to council to seek that direction so that we're not acting independently um, of council. Um, with respect to a lot of the ones that are here before you this evening, through the Drainage Act, they have the ability to do this and our responsibility is to bring it forward to council. Um, that's just how the Drainage Act is written, so we're complying with the legislation that way. But staff are directed to bring forward anything that we need the road authority to do. Staff are bringing that forward for council's direction before we implement anything. Any questions to Ms. Robinson before I go to the account manager? County manager, please. Actually, I really like Ms. Robinson's answer. Okay. So, we have a motion. Any further questions? Oh, yes, sorry, Councillor Brunton, I have you written down, too. Yes, you are. Um, yeah, I, that's a good point. I, I think if you're familiar with the Drainage Act, and I'm sure Lee is, uh, that when the road authority signs something, 99% of the time we get dinged with the largest cost. Having said that, I understand she will bring those things forward, so that's no problem. My concern, and I've raised it a couple of times regarding uh, if we could possibly, and I don't know about the uh, older uh, drainage uh, reports, when we deal with them, I really like to see a map that shows the drainage area in detail. Um, and I don't know if it can be done on the screen or by a, a better map. The maps provided in here are, aren't sufficient as far as I'm concerned so and I've asked that a few times so when possible if we could see those I would appreciate that okay thank you and a uh, councillor Geisens thank you uh, it doesn't matter which one but I'm looking at the very first one and we talked about proposed abandonment of some of these drains but will they still function that's my question and who's going to look after them once they are no longer uh, considered to be a municipal uh, uh, drain, I guess. I think that would be Ms. Robinson. Uh, through Thank the you. chairman to council, um, they will no longer be a drain. <clears throat> the three that are here in front of us this evening are the uppermost reach of the drain, so they only benefit a single property owner, and that property owner has applied for that, which means that they intend to maintain them on their own, and they will not adversely affect anyone else. And the others, are they the same or are they different? Um, through the chairman to council, um, they are all exactly the same. We would not be recommending the abandonment if it had the potential to adversely affect anybody other than the person requesting the abandonment. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion that is on the floor. Motion is carried. And that brings us to deputations. Oh, yes, you speak to it, please. Thank you. On, on behalf of the chair, I think this time now we have an opportunity to do some juggling because our first deputation isn't scheduled to be here until 3 p.m. And then we have a presentation that's scheduled for four. So if it's council or committee's desire, we could move into closed session and get that uh, item dealt with. All in favor of that? You have you smooth talker, you. <laughs> All right, we are now going. I just need a mover and second. We need a mover and a seconder before we go. Count Mayor Luke, followed by Councillor Black. All in favor? We will now be going in camera to deal with the item that is in your pink paper. Okay, young lady. You're doing well. I'm so coming. Take your time. We will start with you. <laughs>
that's all you have to say. And then lead us wherever we're going. Uh, you're over there, please. Get over there. <laughs> Dave, just tell her. Get over there. What kind of county manager are you putting the hammer down? I'm a friendly Oh, uh, sure. I'll do good talk to you back up. <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll do. My computer's just logging in. Okay, buddy. You just take your time. Not everybody's sitting down anyway. Okay, uh, councillors, we are back in session again, please. Uh, Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you, through the chair. We now need a mover and a seconder to adjourn the closed session at Mayor Luke. 244. Councillor Black. All in favor? Motion is carried. And there is nothing to report out of closed session this evening. The, the next item on the agenda would be to go back to deputations, which would be item... Uh, number five, that deputation does not commence until 3 p.m. So committee has the option to move on to staff reports, which is item nine. And item 9A cannot be presented until 5 p.m. This, this evening. So if committee so chooses, we could move to item 9B, which is staff report PW 1776. Council, what's your feelings on this? Mayor Luke? Well, Mr. Chair, I think we can uh, get along and wrap that one up in 15 minutes. Okay. So why don't we, are we all in favor of that, by the way? Okay. Let us go then to item uh, 9B. And do we have a staff report? Would that be you, uh, Ms. Robinson? You are now on. Through the Chairman to Council, before you this evening um, is the report for the emergency repair of the Kent Creek retaining wall. Um, in accordance with our purchasing policy, uh, should we need to do emergency repair work, we are to come forward to Council and advise them after the work has been completed. And that's the purpose of the report here this evening, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you. Councillor Brunton, we'll start with you, please. I'll move the report. The work's done. Thank you. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That would be my question. How, what took so long? This work was completed in May. It's now October, and it's just coming to Council now. Ms. Robinson, uh, maybe I should wait for a minute, if you don't mind. I have, a, I have a mover. Maybe I should get a seconder first before we start debate. Councillor Black has moved. Now, Ms. Robinson, please. So, Brunton and Black, please. Uh, through the Chairman to Council, um, I will follow up with staff with respect to the delay. They typically uh, do the summary once they have all of the invoices in from the contractor, so I would suspect that we hadn't seen all of the invoices to date, but I can certainly follow up and report back to Council if you wish. Okay. Any further questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion is carried. Through the chair, then, the next um, item on the agenda, if we follow this order prior to 3 p.m., would be staff report PW1779. If committee so chooses, then, then we can move to that staff report. That would be on page 42. We're all in favor of that, are we not? Uh, I need to see a majority of hands. Are we in favor of going with this? We are. All right. Now, questions? Or is somebody going to make a report yeah. first or give sure, the report sure. first? And then we will have questions. Madam. Uh, through the chairman to council, before you is the, um, report, as requested by council, is the report for the Port Rowan branch, the public library, the basement leak. Um, staff are recommending uh, that we engage PK construction to complete the investigation and the repairs required at the Port Rowan uh, branch to address the issues that they're currently experiencing in the basement, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, I'm sure we have some. We'll start with Councillor Height, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Public Works, I noticed we're uh, bypassing our purchasing policy again. This is an especially uh, fuzzy one, considering we've had these contractors go on site and three of them have submitted a quote. So if we were to retender this, I see that the person who has quoted us the price wouldn't be able to compete in the tender. What's with all this goings on? Uh, through the chairman to council, actually in accordance with our purchasing policy, um, under a certain dollar figure, we are permitted to, to go through this. The reason that this is actually here in front of us this evening is because we were unable to obtain three quotes. So in accordance with our purchasing policy, we have to bring it forward. So it has complied with the purchasing policy. Under this threshold, we are permitted to, to do this, to follow this process. Okay. Mayor Luke. Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to move the recommendation. It's outlined on page 42 of our agenda, please, and I'll speak to it if you get a seconder. We, we have a seconder. Councillor Black has seconded. So we now have a motion on the floor by Councillor Mayor Luke and followed by Councillor Black. You are now speaking. Well, if you've got a wet basement and you've got a basement full of archives and you've got a public building and you've got 12000 in a budget to f replace the weeping tile, but it's not the weeping tile that's the major problem. It's outlined in the report that it's the slab on grade and the wall and the openings that it's coming through and it's recirculating and the sump pump goes on and on and on and on. Been down there, had a look at this. We don't have 40,000 in the capital budget, we have 12. Let's fix it, we own it, let's make it right, thank you. Thank you, and just before I go to you, Councillor Black, you're next on the agenda. Councillor Sonnenberg has just come in and the question to you, Councillor Sonnenberg, do you have anything to declare? Well, Mr. Chair. Now, Councillor Black, and welcome. Councillor Black, you're on. Oh, oh, thank you for the welcome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question um, on the board, the library board with yourself and the mayor. And I know there has been some discussion around the table about the relationship of the library and the county in terms of facilities, because they are... are um, county-owned facilities and not property that are owned by the library, and yet they, they do and have put money in the budget to repair facilities. So I am wondering if staff at some point would be having some kind of a, a discussion with the library board to kind of figure out or establish a better relationship between the library and Norfolk County in terms of, I guess, landlord and, and tenant, uh, w without, uh, you know, burdening the library and uh, uh, providing maybe a better level of service and clear guidelines as to who does what. So I wondered if, I'm looking at county manager, Mr. Chairman, if maybe he could um, offer a response. And uh, I don't expect, you know, like uh, something full right now. I just hope that in the future there would be these discussions. And I will come to the Mount, uh, county manager in a moment. However, we have a motion on the floor that's been moved and seconded. I think that is not part of the motion. Soon as we finish this, I will come back to you. Is that all right? Mm, well, I, th I thought it was because it is dealing with the relationship between uh, the county and the library facility. So this, this does include that, but it also includes something broader. But up to you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think I have uh, chosen to say we're going to deal with the motion. Okay. And then after the motion, the county manager will answer the question. Any further questions about the motion, which is on the floor? Seeing none, all in favor. Motion is carried. Now, Councillor Black, would you please address the county manager? Really want me to, to repeat no. everything I just said? No, I do not. But I I'd didn't like think you, you did. I'd like a response from the <laughs> county manager, please. <laughs> Mr. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the county manager. Thank you. I can inform County Council that uh, a number of senior staff and myself have had meetings with Ms. King at two in uh, about the last six weeks or so, five weeks in that sort of range. Uh, and this has been an item for discussion amongst staff. Uh, there are uh, some potential options on the table. To my mind, the appropriate time to address the issue of the ongoing relationship and how we might structure, um, establish clear uh, jurisdictions and priorities 
vis-a-vis uh, -vis property ownership and the relationship as between the two it would be a really good topic to deal with after we go through the budget process, a sort of a, a March or April kind of item. Uh, as I understand from Ms. King, there's about $10,000 for that they call capital improvements in the annual budget for the library system. And $10,000 doesn't come anywhere near an actual honest to God capital cost. I think they call capital what we would call operating over here for very minor repairs to things like shelves and the like, um, to sort of minor infrastructure. We do have uh, one reserve account that sort of has the word library in it, but there isn't any, um, as far as I'm aware, any ongoing uh, contribution to that uh, made by made by council. So um, it's a little.